Yo, what's going on guys? It's Danny here and we're doing a melee cleave. Some melee cleave action. Scarlet Monastery. Cathedral. We have two warriors. Actual monster warriors, both with Ravager. It's this weapon I was talking about that uh, drops from Armory part of Scarlet Monastery and on ch chance on hit, which does proc very often, it uh, spins and deals, deals damage to everyone around you. It does weapon damage, and the weapon damage is sick. It's a better weapon than the Whirlwind Axe, which is the best warrior weapon at level 30 to 40 or so. Look at them uh, spinning. As a rogue, I might have to do like a little bit, not exactly focus, not fully focus on dealing damage, because that's going to be the warriors. We're just a little bit over leveled from this dungeon. Uh, I'm three level higher than most of the mobs. I think the only way for me to compete with them, DPS, is when I pop CDs, when I'm cleaving as well. Otherwise, it's gonna be on them most of the time. Now that I'm level 41, at 40, I got this talent uh, at the bottom of combat spec, Adrenaline Rush. Another cooldown to pop, apart from the ratio Blood Fury attack power and the Blade Flurry for the two target hitting. Now I have Adrenaline Rush as well, every 5 minutes, which increases the energy region by 100%. So it just gives you a lot of energy for 15 seconds. Um, there's a lot of casters in here. Um, so, as a rogue, I would have to go to the casters, interrupt them, because the warriors, we want... Everyone other than Warrior wants to set up so that the Warriors can cleave as best as possible. We want to help setting up the, the pools and the mobs. Like if you are not a Warrior, you have aggro of something for example, you run to the Warriors. You want the mobs always stacked on top of each other so the Warriors can cleave. So I'm gonna be kicking to interrupt the casters. I'm gonna be like, sort of like a chaser, let's, we can call it maybe. When mobs are low HP, they start running. Again, the warrior, it's pretty inefficient for the warrior to, with his like 4 second attack time, to try to chase after a mob. Um, it's me, chasing the low HP ones that are running away, so they don't pull the entire dungeon. Um, I can share a little, a couple uh, little macros that I that I found for Rogue yesterday. I can share in a sec when there is time. These are really fast runs, by the way. I've been doing for maybe an hour, a couple hours with these guys, especially with the leader. Some people come and go for after one or two runs, but me and the leader have stayed for a couple hours so far. Uh, basically, I have a macro on my Sinister Strike. And the macro is this one, slash start attack, and then slash cast Sinister Strike. So that way I can spam Sinister Strike button and uh, make my character attack the mob, even if I don't have enough energy for the Sinister Strike. Because sometimes, I'm sure a lot of rogues do that. They would use the Sinister Strike button as the first move when you are approaching a mob. But if you just finished killing another mob and you don't have enough energy for Sinister, then your character stays one or two seconds sometimes without attacking. You know, you're just losing a second or two of time where you could be DPSing. Because the more I play Classic, the more I feel like how much it is about those little efficiencies, like the min-maxing. Most of the time, Okay, a lot of the times, there's not going to be one massive huge upgrade to something. It's going to be the many little upgrades or the many little efficiencies that end up being one big one. 
So it's like one second where you're not attacking. Oop, you lost the DPS there. You lost one DPS. Another second not attacking. Whoop, lost another DPS. So that's the macro there. I think it would be useful if you're not using any macros at all as a rogue. That one will be useful for sure. The warrior is spinning again. I cannot compete with that beast. I'm gonna get the caster because uh, he's annoying. Come here. Come here and get cleaved. And I'm gonna chase the low levels, the low HPs. So it basically the macro does what it does is uh, with the same button I start attacking the the mob that I have selected. And if I do have energy for Sinister Strike, obviously Sinister Strike will be casted. I need to pick lock this because it actually levels up lock picking. Uh, if you pick the doors in Scarlet. It would be nice to focus on, on these mobs here, the Abbot one. Because they use heal and I can interrupt. If I didn't have the Sinister Strike macro, for example, what I used to do is I used to right click with my cursor here. You probably saw it in previous videos. And agility. Uh, mine is 9 agility and 7 strength. So I was like right clicking the mobs one by one and stuff. But yeah, another macro is uh, mouse over. I know how good mouse over macros are because of my priest. I use a lot of them all the time. Mouse over for kick. So that way I don't have to swap my target. I lose my combo points if I kick another target than the one I'm selecting. But um, I don't have to swap. Because you might lose another couple seconds not DPSing or even more if you swap target to kick. So let's see if uh, I can give an example here. Uh, Shaman is also interrupting the casters really well, which is something I like. No! It's gonna pull. I couldn't. I missed my last couple attacks. At least it pulled one mob. Okay, I'm gonna pop all three CDs next pull. One of them got heal off. That might be really bad. We'll use a potion. And focus the healer. Casting. No killing me either, please. Uh, this is the mouse over. I guess uh, on YouTube you can pause the video. Um, mouse over kick. I try to have only this one on my spell bars, but I would rather have one normal kick for the target I'm selecting. And the uh, the mouse over. Perfect example would probably show up here. Actually, let's pop everything here. So I'm hitting this one. I'm half targeted this one, and that one is casting. Boom! Interrupted because of the mouse over. And if the one I was hitting, if he was casting, then I would use the normal kick instead. It's another useful thing to not have to switch target. Maybe this is how I'm gonna do it with my cooldowns. I'll use Blade Fury and Bl Blade Flurry and Blood Fury every time together. But Adrenaline Rush, I will use it every every second Blade Flurry.
What level will you farm SM until? SM... I mean, I kind of want 41 to 42, ideally. Then I have a lot of quests left to do in Stranglethorn as well. Um, there is a... There is a quest for a 10 Aji, 10 Stamina Cloak, which is an upgrade for me. Um... You can farm Cathedral as the latest. This warrior is 42. You can farm it until 44 and then move on to Zulfarak. 43, 44 even. 43 to 44 is gonna take a while, but you could farm until 44. I want just 42 from this. Then I'm gonna quest for a couple of levels, I feel. Before I start with Zulfarak at 45. Look what I've got at 45. Look what I bought here. I found it pretty cheap. This seems like better weapon than some level 60 rogues and I'm gonna equip it at 45. You know how much I bought it from the auction house? This was 30 gold. If I check the auction house now and whenever I check it always it's 60 or 50 and I bought it for 30. Someone put it for 30. I guess I was lucky to spot it. And I bought it right away. I was like, holy shit. I must have this. Level 45, I'm gonna equip this beast. Blood Razor. It's funny because my priest doesn't have an epic yet. And my rogue is gonna have one at level 45. So I'm gonna equip this beast at 45 and I'm gonna start melee cleaving Zulfarak. Even if it was level, uh, even if it was 50 gold, I think I probably would still bought it because it's um, it can be a way to advertise myself. Let's say better advertisement because I can link it to people. I'm like Zulfarak, I have this, and they're gonna be like, oh shit, this guy's gonna pull out some sick DPS, you know. I could have popped CDs here, actually. I forgot. It's too late now. It's fine. Pay 25 for this. Assassination Blade level 52. Yeah, Assassination Blade is very good. It's 1% crit. But it's level 52. I'm gonna equip this at 45 and it's gonna help me questing, grinding, Zulfarak, and I'll carry it until 60, plus I will still have it at 60 until I farm my other best one, like some that's better than this one. I will have this for a long time, and 30 gold honestly seems nothing compared to how much value I will get from it. So the leader always uh, does it like this. That's how we do the, the runs in this one. Um, we leave one part for the way out. Like on the way out we, we clear this one. On the way in we clear left side and now we go right side. Something like that. So that was uh, Scarlet Monastery Cathedral with the melee cleave group. Hope you guys enjoyed it and found something useful from here or just entertain or enjoyment and stuff. If you guys enjoyed it, don't forget to like the video and most importantly subscribe. I upload a lot of stuff in here on YouTube. I also stream on Twitch every day. So don't forget to follow the stream and check it out when I'm live. Thank you for watching. I will see you in the next video. Have a nice day.